All right, so here I am in the Bahamas. I just landed, got through customs, got my passport stamped, and the next challenge is to uh, find my hostel. So I came out here to this uh, roundabout where the map from the hostel says there should be a bus station, but I, I see no bus station here. And the dilemma is, should I go all the way back to the airport and take a taxi or should I rent a car? Because I'm probably going to need a car to get to the marathon and a 5K on Saturday and Sunday. Um, but then where do I park it? So maps me says 3.4 miles walking. I could do that. I'm here to run a marathon. What's 3.4 miles? The first sighting of the water that makes the Bahamas so famous. I'm about I'm a little more than halfway and uh, good thing I have some water because it's very hot out today. Um, I've been rationing it. Much better view. Still trucking along and uh, look what I found here. Uh, so getting a little preview. It's good. Half a mile to go and look what I find. Bus stop. Too late. All right, I found it, uh, Baja Sea Backpackers. And uh, it's, I learned some good things deciding to walk here. Um, one, I know that uh, in about an hour and 15 or hour and 20 minutes, I can uh, get to back to the airport if I need to walk or find that situation. I also learned where the hardware store is. I also learned where the gym is and um, a dive bar. All right, I made it to my hostel. I took off my jeans. Yes, I was walking in jeans the whole time and they were soaked because it's very nice weather here. And check out this view from the hostel. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. There it is. And they also rent scooters. So I thought this morning I would pick up my bib today for the 5K, which isn't until tomorrow morning, but that way if I failed today, I could still get it race morning. But uh, after a lot of trials and tribulations, there we go. I got my bib and my backpack and, and I'm ready for tomorrow. Except for now I'm nine miles from the hostel and I, my feet hurt and things like that. Wherever I go, I like to check out the cemeteries if I come across them. Um, I find it interesting, you know, there's, it's an island, so there's only so much room. There's Morton. One of the things about being able to walk around a city is, you know, you come across cemeteries like that. But what's directly across the street from the cemetery? The school. And there's some kids playing. So this here is the straw market, which uh, is, you know, lots of touristy stuff here on Bay Street. And uh, this is this is where this is where all the cruise ships let off and. Um, all the tourists just come up and down and you can see it's like jewelry shop, jewelry shop, jewelry shop, jewelry shop. So this is a touristy area. You can see there's a pirate ship that you can uh, take a tour. There's the cruise ships that are docking right now and uh, slamming the streets with tourists. And uh, here they are. And what's that in the background? That's a Senor Frogs. There's uh, no, no port city is uh, complete without a Senor Frogs. Hostel buddies, having some beers. <laughs> These are all people from my hostel. We're heading up now to the uh, 66 staircase for built for Queen Victoria when she freed the slaves, built by the slaves. There it is. There's Ariana right there. Oh, Ari Ariana. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we we're gonna we're gonna run to the top of the stairs. No, Here we not. go. Boom boom boom. boom. Here we go. I'm a sucker for anything Queen Victoria. So it's all good. It says hostile people, they need to get their picture in front of the waterfall. It just started raining out of nowhere, but here we are. It's the waterfall over there. It's over there is a step somewhere. It's like Indiana Jones here. It's awesome. It's 4.45. Time to do a 5K and it's really windy out here. 
Oh my god, that's a nice elevation climb. This is a pretty good 5k, especially for international. Uh, good finish line with bananas and oranges and water. And uh, my little medal. Two hours uh, later, I am uh, hit home here with me and my scooter. Uh, back at the hostel. Man, driving here is kind of tough. Uh, I mean, for one, you drive on the other side of the road as in the US, but uh, it's not terrible, but there's some potholes and when you have a scooter, um, those can be kind of deadly. Um, and there's a lot of roundabouts. So right now I'm just uh, killing a little bit of time. I got a few hours before I'm allowed to pick up my bib, but I'm gonna start heading over there anyway. I gotta go to uh, Paradise Island to the Atlantis Hotel so that I can uh, get my bib and then uh, that I'm allowing myself some time because traffic, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, and you never know if the buses are, it's a, it's a Saturday, so I think the buses are a little bit uh, fewer and far between. So here I am walking up the Sydney Poitier, Sydney Poitier bridge for the second time today, or third, I guess, but uh, I could have taken a bus. I took a bus to the downtown. And I felt so bad for the bus driver because, you know, the downtown, that's where all the cruise ships get off and fat Americans are get on the bus and being all rude American. Yeah. I want to get off here. And he's like, I can't just stop in the middle of the street, lady, you know? This other guy is just like, where's my change? And it's like, you know, like, it was like a, it was like a dollar change, you know, the guy probably thought it was for a tip or something, who knows, but I mean, you know, what do I do? I either give him exact change, or I tell him how much to give me back. There's no confusion, when I communicate to him what I need to communicate to him, and he understands me. So there's, there's Atlantis, I love this on the bridge here. Whoever painted that is great. There we go. Things are happening. And look at what we got over here. Noon. I love noon. All right, so uh, I got my bib here, and I wanted to show you uh, one of my favorite little things here at the uh, at the expo. I'm a runner because I run. So I took the ferry from Atlantis back to Senior Frogs instead of walking over the bridge and I hopped on the bus, the right bus, so I was told, bus 12, and uh, take, it would take me to Sandy Port which is right across the street from the hostel and then uh, before we get to Sandy Port he makes a left turn which then I know is not right but then because uh, it's left. But he's not, it's not right, and he just keeps going. I think, oh, that's because he's gonna circle around and then come up on the other side, and that's his route. But then he just keeps going, and he just keeps going. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm looking at the map, thinking he'll turn, okay, he's going that way. But now, regardless, the end of the story is I'm four and a half miles away from my hostel. So, see how things work? I was walking, and uh, all of a sudden, here comes this guy and he uh, drives up and he says hey you exercising or you need a ride i said you know i need a ride and it turned out to be bob from new york uh he's down here doing missionary work and he knew exactly where uh where uh, baja baja sea was and he's like oh yeah my boss is doing the marathon tomorrow and all this stuff and and uh he gave me a ride and here i am back where i need to be and uh that's how it goes so it's 9.30 on Saturday night and the marathon is tomorrow and I need to go to bed and I should go to bed and I'm actually tired but I just don't want to go to bed. Alright, it's uh, 4.45, 4.25 and I have about uh, a 10 minute ride to Junkanoo Beach. Have a great run! <laughs>
All right, yeah. And it's the turnaround. Uh, that means, that means I'm going home. This is mile 24, which is, in my opinion, the longest mile of a marathon. My medal, not bad. So I returned the scooter and I was hoping that he could come pick it up, the guy, but uh, he's partying right now. So I drove it all the way over here. This is my new friend, Harley. We are, she is a guest. She is, she belongs to another guest here at the hostel, but I am watching her for a few minutes. So I'm here today at the Pompeii Museum, which is the Bahamian uh, National Museum on Slavery. And I think it's really important uh, to come to these places. You see things like this with a neck shackle, or you see things uh, like that. Those are the double neck shackle for hauling two people at a time up to the auction block. And you know, you learn about slavery as a kid in school and you learn um, you know that it's bad and whatnot, but you don't really grasp it as a kid because you're still trying to learn what it means to be human and you're still trying to learn that there's a world out there and people out there who don't live like you and uh, they, they don't have the same uh, luxuries or whatnot as you and so here when you're older you can come to museums like this and you can actually grasp what it meant and how poorly and badly people treated each other and still do to this day. So my only goal besides the marathon was to come here to see Fort Charlotte and uh, here we are. This is a map of Fort Charlotte here so it's made up of Fort Stanley and Fort Darcy. Here's a cannon. Uh, I'll give you a really clear idea of what the vantage point was. Here at uh, Fort Charlotte, uh, they were so far advanced that they had modern day plumbing and toileting. Almost modern day, so to flush the toilet, we gotta <clears throat> like that. But you can still wash your hands afterwards. Now we will venture down into the fort and see what's down there. Watch your step. Oh, this was the well. Good thing they put a grate on it. I almost dropped my phone there. But this is pretty cool. You can imagine the blokes sitting around here. So this, I guess, must have been like uh, some quarters for some guys. And you can go down those steps. Well, I'm not allowed to. It's roped off. But I wonder why they would build such things as this. So like maybe one of the one of the soldiers could pop his head in and be like, oh, hey, is Stevenson down there? Stevenson, you there? What I find interesting about being underneath Fort Charlotte is that this is like building in reverse. This is cut into the limestone mountain here. So it's not put a brick where you want the wall to be. It's remove everything except for where you want the walls to be. You can kind of imagine down here all the British doing their training drills and whatnot. And it's also i show you a good uh, panoramic here of how much they could actually see of the ocean to uh, protect their, 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 their island. People are putting a lot of graffiti on the walls here of Fort Charlotte. And my particular, particularly, particularly favorite one here is uh, Duck plus Carol. I don't know who Carol is, but uh, she sure is one lucky woman. This is Junkanoo Beach. You can see it's very uh, popular during the daytime here. If you're uh, single, you can grab a drink and uh, hang out in the water. If you're a uh, family, you can hang out on the beach too. Uh, do whatever it is that you want to do uh, in the, the Bahamas, I guess. Looks like that's going to be quite the resort uh, when it gets done. And uh, over there, why, there's the cruise ship. So everybody from the cruise ships comes off the cruise ship and boom right on over here grab a drink get in the water you're in the Bahamas having a good time uh, I just hit my head getting off the oh, bus so, you know. oh my nurse is here my nurse is here let's see what we have let's see what we have oh sorry I stepped on your toes she's gonna help me out he got bit by a great white shark oh, wow. it's yeah it's pretty like, deep is it really yeah are you sure I'm I am promise I have no diseases 
Don't have eight. Nope, I don't have. <laughs> nope, I don't even. I, I, That's pretty. <laughs> 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 it looks really bad. But it does look really it bad. It doesn't hurt as much as it looks. It looks so bad. It looks like I am bleeding from my nose upward. I feel like upward. you need to disinfect it. <laughs> She's working on it. See, we got high jacks. Look at this. 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 I think you're gonna survive. Okay, I will. I'll, I'll survive. They all they all agree I will survive. I mean, so I did good. plastic. Girl, girl puts a maxi pad on my head. Look at this thing. <laughs> girl puts a maxi pad. No, but it's, 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 it'll absorb this shit. So. There we go. So that was a bit of uh, excitement for everybody at the hostel. Uh, I still can't tell what it looks like. Maybe I will have a Bahama scar. All right, time to go home and walk along the same path that uh, I took when I first got here. But this time I know if I see a bus coming up behind me, I can just hail it down. I don't have to be a bus stop. But I will try to walk it because I got three and a half hours before my flight leaves. I'm back in the uh, roundabout where I first started when I first got here and back over there, yonder is the airport. And you know what, this whole time walking, on this particular road, I never once saw a bus. And my favorite part after coming home from any trip is putting the pin in the map.